I've got about 15 minutes to tell you a little bit about open innovation. So I'm not going to really focus on Stevenage and the catalyst. I'm going to try and convince you that open innovation is here. It's one tool in the innovation, business creation, business development toolbox. It's not a panacea. You don't have to worry about the intellectual property. All of that's being sorted out for you. But if you don't get with the program, you might get left behind because models are changing in business and particularly in the life science sector and I'll come on and tell you a little bit about why. I'm a PhD in biochemistry. I spent four years at Baylor in Houston in cardiovascular research. Go, go Texans. <laughs> Used to be Oilers when I was there. And then I came back and became a science director in what used to be Amersham International Pharmacia, Amersham Pharmacia are now part of the GE magnet. And beyond that, I then went back to my hometown in Manchester to run a business incubator on a university campus. So I'm familiar with the academic culture. I've been in industry and I've worked at the interface. And for the last three years, I've been developing or helping to develop as part of a team what is the UK's first biomedical open innovation campus. Now, who thinks they know what open innovation is? Can we just show hands, please? Come on, be brave. Nobody. Are you real? Oh, no. And what about business incubation? Do people know? Oh, that's better. That's a little bit more comforting. OK, so I've got a blank canvas to tell you a little bit about open innovation. I'm not going to tell you about the theory. I've spent three years of my life doing the conference tour, listening to other people talk about the theory. I want to convince you that innovation is a contact sport. I just want that to make sure that you understand what I mean. When you're creating an environment or a community, you want people to engage. You want people to contact. You want unusual suspects to come together and talk and think and discuss and hopefully come up with new and different ideas. It's really interesting to me, and I've learned a lot in the first session about the power of the crowd from the philanthropic Mexican view of the world. Fantastic how the crowd can get together and change the, hu the male approach to diversity. I think that's wonderful. I heard Serge talk about building in blocks. And then I heard Philippe say, you've got to bring it all together. Now, I'm going to define or tell you a, a little bit about convergence, but I'll come on to that later because the future of healthcare, and don't forget we're all in this for patient benefit. We're not here to make money. That may or may not be part of the consequences of what we do, but we're actually here to make a difference. I hope you believe that, because it's going to come down to you, not me. No hair and grey hairs are not going to be the future. It's down to you guys. So for me, open innovation is about sharing risk, sharing reward, creating environments and opportunities for people to bump into each other. And when I usually say that, people say, what about the IP? OK, so let's confront that one on the head, OK? Developing collaborations and partnerships around what is true open innovation is actually no different from a general, open, a general collaboration or partnership. There are lawyers who very often get in the way of partnerships and collaborations, but who can get you there and can sort out all the intellectual property issues. And we have a red, amber, green system whereby if you have something that you would be at a conference and you're happy to talk about over a beer, that's green, that's cool, you know your academics, everybody does that. All academics know about open innovation, right? Amber is where you have a bit of a doubt about something you're talking about might be slightly secretive, might be giving away something, so you put a confidentiality in agreement in place. And then red is stop, I need to do this entire conversation with you under confidentiality. You'd be surprised how long it takes to get to that point. And big corporates are very often reluctant to put confidentiality agreements in place before they understand a little bit more about what you have, what you've got, and how you can work together with them. So I, I need to reassure you that IP and IP discussions do not get in the way of open innovation until they need to. So the Chesborough model says, doesn't matter if you're a little company or a big company. Big companies have had to change their model because the NIH model, they're not invented here, everything having to be within corporates, doesn't work. 
or it doesn't work efficiently. And certainly because of the cost of drugs, and if you think about some of the problems we've got confronting us around Alzheimer's, dementia, I know it's a bit early for you guys, but I worry about these things. So <laughs> those disease states are not going to be solved by one big corporate entity. Partnership and collaboration is the way forward. If it's going to take a billion dollars to come up with a solution, I can't think of too many corporates who can do that on their own. The model of doing it on your own hasn't worked as effectively. So the two things are coming together in the life science sector right now. And then in other sectors, there's precedence. In the IT sector, Nokia have established a campus in Scandinavia around open innovation. Philips in Eindhoven have generated a very successful, thriving cluster around engineering and all things Philips. And Unilever down the road in Colworth, in Bedford, have another open innovation campus. So the concept is not unique, it's not new, it's just relatively new to the life science biomedical sector. And the rationale is because partnership and collaboration is the way forward. And the way I translate that is to do nothing is not an answer. To do the same things again, in other words, use the same business models that haven't worked, I believe somebody smarter than I said is the first sign of madness. So we're all looking for new business models. And whereas open innovation might not be the panacea, it should be one of the tools and one of the approaches that you consider. So academics believe that they do that routinely. Big corporate are having to embrace it because they're having to change. And the biotechs that I look after haven't got a clue. And they need guidance and hand-holding and reassurance because very often they're one bit of IP or one bit of asset and to talk to companies early comes at a risk. So that's my role. I'm an incubation manager. I provide a safe haven. That's what I did in Manchester for academic startups and spin-ups. Now I'm on the GSK site. Three years ago, it was just me, GSK, and two buildings, an incubator and an accelerator going up. 38 million pounds of GSK, Wellcome Trust, and government money. SBC, the catalyst, is a joint venture between GlaxoSmithKline and the Wellcome Trust. And government has invested in this because a UK PLC approach is absolutely required. And the key word in the name is catalyst. What we're trying to do is be a catalyst for innovation. I'm a dating agent, I'm a marriage broker, I actually get people together. I'm not the expert, I have a network, a panel, an ecosystem around me. So that if you ask me, have you got, or I need help with, I will find in my Rolodex somebody that can help you. But the beauty of this model is 100 yards from the incubator are two and a half thousand people within the biggest farmer in the world, or one of them, who know something about how to make a drugs. So, the hypothesis we're testing is if you build an incubator next to one of the biggest farmer in the world, does it make the blindest bit of difference to UK biotech? So the model hasn't worked well, it needs to work better, we need more investment, but we need earlier engagement between academia and industry, better translational research, and we, don't, we need more robust, viable biotech companies. So that's welcome to my world of open innovation, that's what it's about. Share the risk, share the reward, and really it's about a state of mind. So I've been writing blogs about whether or not you get it. I'm also a landlord. But if, you, if your first question when you come to me on my campus is, Do you, how much is the rent, then you don't get it. What you should be asking me is, how do I get access to the pharma expertise in NMR? or x-ray crystallography? Have you got somebody who can help me with my business plan? Or do you know somebody who can come on my team and help me? So that's the ethos and the philosophy. It's about building a community. It's about building an ecosystem. It's not trying to replicate what goes on at the Imperial Innovations Incubator or what goes on in an incubator near and dear to my heart in Manchester, which was very successful. This is about doing something different and taking a different value proposition and offering it to the whole of the UK. So the balance, and this is difficult to get your head round, the balancing act is not all of my activities and the catalyst activities happen in Stevenage. We're 70% full at the moment and we're planning the next stage for new build because we've been so successful after two years. 
But the thing I'm proudest of is we have projects in Manchester, Strathclyde, Bristol, Exeter. We talk to the Imperial guys. So open innovation is happening around it, us right now. We're not, off, we're not in the game long enough for me to be able to say that we're having an impact on patient benefit yet. You guys know the story. It's 10 years from a biotech or an academic research idea, it's a minimum of 10 years and half a million dollars, half a, 500 million dollars to get to clinical patient benefit. So this is a long journey. So one of the things that I'm grappling with at the moment and people ask me all the time is how do you put measures, how do you measure success around open innovation? It's not enough to say that you've got X number of companies or Y number of projects. What we're looking for are more and more evidence of these, the dodge and car, the bumper car model, of people get, getting involved with each other without me forcing them to. So, two examples. We have, right now, a consortium being built in Stevenage around a dozen of our own tenant companies to, that are bidding or planning to bid for Horizon 2020 funding in the rare disease space. They have now plugged into Barcelona, to Leiden and to Groningen. No money's changing hands. They're doing this through true partnership and collaboration. They are genuinely interested in sharing risk and sharing reward. The other thing that's happening more and more is that we have now also brought GE and Johnson & Johnson to the same campus. And you might wonder, why does GSK open its door to a campus for others to look? Well, GSK knows that not everything on the campus is going to be of interest to them. And the blessing for me, unlike other pharma companies globally, is we have an English CEO of GSK. And that makes a massive difference. So there's a really altruistic view that biotech in the UK should be stronger, could be stronger, and if that happens, GSK will benefit anyway. Because it will see what's going on. But it doesn't mind sharing it with a Lilly, with a Novartis, with a Johnson & Johnson. So you can't do open innovation with just one pharma company. That was the monkey on my back until Johnson & Johnson turned up on the door and said, we want to set up a partnering office here. GE, you'll remember my story. I'm a former science director at what used to be Amazon Pharmacia. Even there, it took two years to convince them to come and bring their technology platforms to the incubator and make them available in an open innovation way that is for free to the tenant companies and then beyond that to academics who are working in the stem cell, cell technology, diagnostics, stratified medicine areas. So there's a lot going on. Open innovation is not working for every single project but everybody that comes into the community gets it. They understand that they don't come in, rent space, close the door and not talk to anyone. That would be the antithesis of what open innovation is about. So what we're trying to do is generate and create this community that actually believes that an open innovation approach might actually make a difference. So, have I convinced you? <laughs> Who knows? Thanks for listening. <laughs>